Hello, everybody. Hello. As usual, I always wait for the chat to see if, if I'm live here. <laughs> Hello. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. I'm here today with Erica and Mike. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hi. Oh, Erica, you're still muted. <laughs> Hello. 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 Yep. Great. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Thank you for doing this. Good to see oh, you too, you. man. Thank you for having us. <laughs> hey. Wait, before we start off, uh, right before we started here, we were talking about all the members of Chuck E. Cheese's band. Can you please name them for me? Because I, I only remembered Munch. <laughs> Who's the girl? Who's uh, the chicken girl? Helen Henny. And then was it Luigi? Was the chef? I He's the only one I remember. It's Pasquale. 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 Yeah. And that's, that's the our, name. Yeah. That's the name they went with when they were trying to sneak their pizza off. Okay. On like Postmates, as you know, more <laughs> legitimate pizza. Pasquale's, you know, yeah, pizza tricking and people pizza. into. Yeah. 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 And then there was a dog, like a hound dog. Yeah. Uh, what the heck is his name? Oh my goodness! I think I might have forgotten. Oh, oh, Jasper, Jasper Jowls? T. Jowls. Yeah, Jasper T. Jowls. T, Jasper. like Theodore. Yeah. T is in T Bone. I don't know. Like, I. I know what a Chuck E, the E is entertainment, right? Yeah. 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 T is so, tonight. tonight which is my middle name was entertainment. <laughs> Nico E. <laughs> yeah. Nick. Um, yeah, please uh, tell us a little bit. Um, we're, we're talking about storyboarding, character design, animation, kind of the works here. So uh, tell us about uh, what you're working on and uh, where you where you each come from and and how you got in the industry. You want to go first? Oh, me? Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Um, okay. So I've always wanted to do something in animation, either comics or animation. And uh, uh let's see i did go to cal arts in the early 2000s and i actually because of my experience left animation for about i'd say a good four or five six years and then i came wow. back on my own accord almost in essence sort of having relearned things a different way and mm -hmm. in, in, in some cases so i'm just gonna already say it right there i'm like yeah i'm not when it comes to like cal arts i'm like i'm not I don't usually like go out to like like blah, 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 it's because sure. I really do believe that like there is amazing, insane talent coming from like everywhere, you mm -hmm. know. And it's like it's no longer, you know, just like ooh one private school, you know. Like yeah, it's yeah. and it's it's so nice and refreshing to see that. Um, but anyway, after like all that time away, um, I came back doing. I did advertising for about two or three years, illustration. And then um, I went from that to getting a call from Jessica Brutsky, uh, who had me work on designs for Wabbit, which was the Looney Tunes right before the one that is now, which is like mm, yeah. amazing stuff. <laughs> and from there, I worked, um, I worked on Wabbit at Warner Brothers. I was on pickle and peanut for a hot minute at disney tv and then i have been a the lead character designer for uh both trolls television shows that have come out with the movies um the people on feature are like awesome so the main cast uh are characters that were you know pre-done in cg and i just you know design a the 2d it's done in harmony the new show it looks it, it looks amazing. Cool. I'm really proud of our crew. Our crew was like, oh, man. Um, <laughs> but Harmony just really balanced out a lot of uh, the problems that were with the first uh, show based on stuff that happened after the first movie. So um, now it's like with the second movie, you have like six or I think what, how many different kinds of trolls? I should know obviously by heart, right? <laughs> but like, it's like when when you're a lead designer on a show you're given uh you're given like a a set like a world and the characters to build and with trolls it's like having six worlds with six different 
you know, characters six times the worlds to build. Um, so for the past, uh, like, yeah, about two years, two and a half years I've been on that. Um, cool. Yeah, so I've been through crawls um, almost for five years at, uh, uh, at, at DreamWorks. Do you work with, is, a, is it a lot of the movie crew are on the TV show or is it kind of a new crew? It's a, it's a completely different separate crew. Okay. Um, uh, we're headed up by Matt Beans, who was uh, on Robot Chicken. Cool. And he's a really, really funny guy. And uh, there is a lot of like, we do communicate with feature, um, obviously, but like, I would try to get, it's really interesting timing wise, because we were actually developing the TV show at the same time they were developing the feature. That's mm -hmm. kind of how this is happening now. You know, uh, so, but getting designs sometimes in, in time that things would make sense was sometimes a little bit like, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, but pulled it off. So, uh, but yeah, like all new, you know, side characters, like from the different, uh, uh, different worlds. Uh, and those are all designed specifically for the, sh the TV show and uh, by yours truly it sounds like a lot of work <laughs> you're you're yeah, really but for it's, real creating uh, a universe thank you it's uh it was no i'm honored though it was it was a lot of work but again a lot of fun um <laughs> these characters are yeah a pleasure to draw so christina in the chat of, saying my, my family loves trollstopia my six hey. and two-year-old sons are crazy about it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Heck yes. I'm glad. Awesome. So yeah, no, that's that's where I've been uh, ever since. And so, yeah, lucky to have work during this time. That's for sure. Yeah. Are you, really um, are you on Trollstopia for the foreseeable future? Is it is it going for a while? Okay, great. Yeah, I'm still going. Go. Cool. Yep. Beautiful. <laughs> and then uh, Mike. Yep. Mike, how about you? Mike. Uh, where did I come from? Where did where I come you, uh... from? <laughs> yeah. I don't know where I came from out of a petri dish. Blame your no. parents. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I grew up in New York. Uh, I know I wanted to work in animation. And at the time, when I was a kid, there was still sort of a New York animation scene. But mm -hmm. then after 9-11, after all the major animation studios left New York. So I was going to, I went to school to SVA. I went to School of Visual Arts in New York between 2007 and 2011. And it was right around the time where like 2D animation shutting down at Disney. And we're all just like, no way, come back. We're about to graduate and go into the... And uh, after I graduated, I just, I was working freelance and it was terrible. And then I said, you know what? It was after Hurricane Sandy destroyed half my town. And I was like, oh. ah, get the heck. And I just packed up my car <laughs> like Tetris. And I just three days straight drove across the country and I moved to LA. And my first job when I moved out here was on the pilot for BoJack Horseman. Wow. So I boarded a chunk of the pilot for BoJack as well as animated a chunk of the pilot, which ended up becoming the first three episodes split apart, I think. And I was on a show called Trip Tank at Shadow mm -hmm. Machine and then on the first season of BoJack. And then after BoJack, um, I was in contact, just like Erica, with Jessica Barutsky and I did a test for Wabbit and that's how I met Erica on oh, cool. Wabbit. Wow. So yeah. I, was, I was working on that. I was wondering how you met. So cool. Yeah, yeah. we, went, <laughs> we, we met, met on, on there on the first season. And then yeah. I was on that for the first, all three, the whole series from the first season all the way to the end when it changed its name to the Looney Tunes. And then after that, I ended up leaving Warner Brothers, figuring out what to do next. And then I get a call back saying, hey, you want to come back and work on more Looney Tunes? And it's the, <laughs> it's the new ones, the Looney Tunes cartoons done yeah. by... Um, Pete Brown Garden Company. And so I was on that for two and a half years and that was fun. So I did, beautiful. I did so boarding. Oh uh, yeah. Boarding, writing, and a little bit of voiceover on that. Beaky buzzard. I was beaky. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was fun. And then uh, just as of recently, I, um, uh, I started at Netflix back in May and I just started and just a few weeks ago, I became, I'm the storyboard supervisor on the Cuphead show. So Great. Now I'm over on the Cuphead show, and that's another classic kind of '30s, '40s, yeah, <laughs> cartoon style, and it's been really, really fun. So that's where I that's where I'm at now. <laughs> um, I, I realize we can't like 
talk too much about something that's not out yet but right. is are you on cuphead for a good while or is it i'm on cuphead like a, for for a few you know for a few months and okay. until sometime in 2020 hopefully they do more looney tunes too that'd be i mean they seem to be yeah i mean we have we did it's going to be in total it's over 200 cartoons yeah and they're still they they only aired i think like maybe 25 of them on hbo yeah. max yeah and I the christmas they're... special just came out yeah yeah just like three or four days ago so there's there'll be more coming but it's gonna it'll take a while to release them all yeah i guess they're kind of like breaking it up into like quote seasons sort of yeah that are i don't know what they, some call it batches some call it drops yeah. some call it <laughs> seasons mm -hmm. yeah i don't get it like i technically like uh erica with trolls it's like season six or eight but it's actually like yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no the way that they, they they set it up for us was very different than the way that you know they laid it out i guess yeah, yeah. so um, and then anyone who checks out Mike's uh, Twitter already, uh, they uh, they already know that you're a pretty accomplished animator too. I mean, you're working yes. on your own like you're working on your own animated shorts and yeah. your own characters and everything. Yeah, I'm doing one. It's almost. I'm hoping we're getting a Christmas break coming up, which is nice. And I'm hoping to knock out the animation. It's going to be completely clean up, and everything's going to be done hopefully by the end of this year. And then I could start wow. doing comping and and. Um, music and final editing hopefully in the first quarter of next year yeah and it's like full animation just like good old school hand-drawn yeah <laughs> I, that's what i love to do and i kind of do it a little in my boards which is sort of mm -hmm. it's not and this is something we'll get into in regards to boards it's like it's not our <laughs> job to animate yeah it's our job to board <laughs> but i will say having an animation background i think does help mm -hmm. at least have an understanding of like how it's going to work and how it's going to move yeah. and stuff so it helps a little I, bit I, every once in a while like no pun intended go a little overboard but uh -huh. i'm trying not to do that so much. <laughs> I've, I've totally gotten boards that are practically animated we just click enter and just lean back yep, and just i just put the it. panels on twos and they just play and yeah it's like oh wow it's animated great yeah <laughs> <laughs> um we're already getting questions here so i'll just dive right in sure Red. Uh, question from Nicole. Um, uh, for both of you, I was wondering when, when storyboarding, is it okay to use a similar or a same shot later on in a sequence, or is it better to use completely new shots and setups every time? That's a good question. I think um, it, for, I know there's a tendency to want to like, oh, every shot has to be unique and dynamic and everything, but um, it's really about economy. And if, it, if, you can kind of get the point across in as few layouts as possible. Yeah. yeah. I don't th not every shot has to be different and unique. Yeah. Which At the same like, time, you're on a deadline. So it's like right. sometimes you have to take the shortcut. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Just as long of, as it doesn't stick out. You yeah. Know? Exactly. Yeah. Like get yeah. away with it and it and it and it feels seamless and it's not janky in a way. It's actually mm. like it's 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 easier i know on on the background guys yeah you know if if you try to limit it because you know i i can't even think of of some of the episodes i worked on uh on trolls especially early on um that uh are awesome background artists uh the um the Sabios twins uh olivia and elena <laughs> like i don't like the amount of backgrounds they had per episode was just like ridiculous wow. yeah. so like i always think about that when i remember like you know them working away like yeah oh, like oh and also crowds crowds oh, are everyone's yes. favorite thing to do oh it's no fun oh crowds, crowds. oh boy <laughs> so um a question from eli uh as someone who is in their senior year what do you think is the best way to manage yourself as a director of assistance you mean a senior year in college? Um, I'm not sure, Eli, college assistant, or high school? Director of assistants, like assistant. Like, yeah, if, like you're, assistant. If, you're in, if you're in a leadership position, mm -hmm. I assume. College, well, I, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it helps to have a little bit of professional empathy to know that like, you, you have to know how to delegate and deal with people and, and um, 
work with them and have a good rapport with them. So like, mm -hmm. it's very, it's very rare that someone right out of school becomes a director, you work your way up to that, usually yeah. boarding and then board <laughs> directing or board supervising and then directing. And you learn that by experience, by interacting with people, knowing how to choose battles and, and tell stories and make good decisions and be economical and all that stuff. So it just, it's a lot of factors to go in to want to be a director. Mm -hmm. So no, definitely. So. And it is on the human element as well. I mean, it's not just business, but on a human element, like knowing people's strengths and, and knowing where they may have weaknesses, but do not like, you know, it's, 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 you work with people and, and you highlight their strengths and make sure everything, everybody's comfortable and that like no one's overloaded um, and, and know that people are human and things happen uh, and, and, and know that you have to roll with it. Um, right. Yeah. Things, things come up, things happen. And, and uh, it's, it's really just about, okay. Uh, just quick decision making, uh, obviously, you know, uh, educated. Yeah. Uh, and, not being, making. and not being wishy washy and just being like, just, and, and a lot of times too, is it's, it's also knowing that you don't have all the answers. You know, a director yeah. is not the person who has all the, supposedly has all the answers. They're not a guru that's supposed to be the, because a lot of people get it. I, I made this comparison once before that um, directing is not like being a general. You're not a general pointing and telling people where to go, what to do. You're, you're like a shepherd. You have a flock mm -hmm. of sheep and to get the flock back to safety, back to the, you know, whatever the glen is, wherever you need to go, you can't force them. You have to just sort of guide them to do naturally what they do. And in the case of being a director, you know that each artist has specific talents, specific uh, pros and cons. Like there's things that they're very good at, things they're weak at and need work on, but it's being able to understand and being able to be, to relay information and to help them get everybody to the end of the end of the keep the entire flock all in one piece by the time you get to the end. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like that kind of mentality. So it's, it's a lot. And Especially sometimes when you're it's held together by tape. Yeah. yeah. But that <laughs> it's held together. Yeah. Our, when I worked on Wabbit, there was, uh, we, we worked together with a guy named Matt Craig and he compared it to spinning plates where if you're on a show and each episode is a plate and you're spinning a plate and you're making sure it's spinning and then episode two is the next plate, three next plate. And then as you get to like four, five, six, seven, the first plate starts to wobble and there's things you need to work on. You have to go back in and make sure that that thing doesn't end. By the end of the season, yeah. your goal is to not have too many plates fall and drop and break. And sometimes you have to let ones go. Sometimes you have to just sort of let some plates fall yeah. because that's just the way things are. But it's sort of, that's sort of the exciting scary part of that aspect of the job sometimes you'll get um you know animation back and there's a kind of a slight problem with it but you have to just you don't e either the budget won't allow for a retake or and you kind of just have to let it go and just move on and just pick your battles learn yeah. to live yeah. with a little mistake or blooper or whatever yeah picking battles is a, a very like two two words right there is that's what I hear from a lot of people who are um, running shows for the first time or directors for the first time. Yeah, any, any, any uh, like higher position. Yeah, mm -hmm. picking yeah. panels, big one. So. Mm -hmm. And learning to compromise because when you compromise. work in a, especially in, a, in an industry where you're working with a lot of people and there's a budget and there's a schedule, in a way it's kind of like a sausage machine and you can't put 110% into every single shot. You have to sure. pick your battles and decide, okay, this is good enough we can't keep spending money on retakes or can't keep noodling with this thing. We just have to give birth to it and let it go. <laughs> and it's most people aren't going to notice it. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, nobody's going to notice it, but you as an artist, cause you're looking at it a million times <laughs> yeah. in the course of the process. <laughs> you're like, Oh, that, that looks wrong. Ooh, yeah. it's going to pop. That looks weird. But yeah, they just sort of let it go. Yeah. Um, Rick asks, what's the most important thing in a character design portfolio? Uh, should we be emulating other show styles? Oof. Um, I think it's always, you know, you can do like maybe like one page of emulating styles really, but a good chunk of the portfolio should show like what you individually uh, bring to the table. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm a big believer in whatever style it is, because I, you know, either uh, Western or Eastern, um, you know, as a designer in, in the industry, when, when you're sort of given a design, you know, either read the, the script that's written for it, you know, director talks to you about kind of uh, what they envision, and then you take all that and you spit it out, and like, I call it like, I'm the human printer in that way. And, uh, you know, you just try and combine all of that. Um, and for me, feeling, like drawing with feeling at first, sort of the emotion for me and, and sort of how it makes the character, like, you know, the way that a character stands, you know, like sort of what shape they're in, what, you know, how they present themselves, everything. Like I try to take into account. Um, and like in some ways, sometimes I have to like, uh, I guess certain things, you know, but it, it, it tends to, uh, it tends to work my favor. So, uh, um, uh, but so far as, as, as in the portfolio, yeah, I would definitely, uh, try various styles, not necessarily like specific styles, like, oh, here's my, you know, page of, from this show. And here's my page of stuff that looks exactly like this show. It's just like, no, nah, just, you know, draw uh, just what comes, if it, it, draw what you're passionate about. Definitely draw what you're passionate about. Um, create characters you're passionate about, because um, people will see that. If you're passionate about it, like as a designer, it, it, people will see it. There's a vibrancy, you know, that comes to uh, character designs designed with a, with, with a real sense of passion. So, you know, uh, I guess that's hey, yeah. <laughs> Michael. Add I'm, something. I'm not a designer by any stretch of the imagination, but it's I think with any portfolio, it's just to show variety and what you're capable of. Yeah. I think the same goes with people's demo reels and, and mm -hmm. stuff and like thesis films for sure, because a thesis film is not supposed to be like your magnum opus because it's the beginning of your career. You have your entire career to make your magnum opus. It's to showcase what you're good at. If you've never animated a horse before or fire or certain things, you're not gonna make your film about a horse that's on fire. Like you're not gonna experiment. You're gonna show what you're capable of because this is my little business card that says, hey, I'm really good at character design or I'm really good at backgrounds. Here's a showcase to show what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. And that's what people are gonna see. Like, hey, that's really good. You know, you don't wanna, you wanna have your, your portfolio tailored to be what your specific job or ideal job wants to be. Wants to be. Mm -hmm. So that's all I could say. But, Great, yeah. Um, and Rick also asked another question, uh, should storyboards be viewed, uh, in PDF view or an animatic form, which is preferred? Uh, either, or just, it depends yeah. on who, if you're sending it in, like an animatic is fine. Um, a PDF is fine. As long as the drawings are clear and you can easily access, you know, access it. Like most recruiters and people will be able to watch a an MOV or an MP4 file, or look at a PDF and, and thumb through it, just as long as all the information's there. And uh, I've had, to, I've sent in stuff for jobs and I've sent in both animatics of my boards as well as PDFs, just to have a mix to, sh whatever they prefer, at least there's both. So. Right. Cause you know, also I, I realized too, maybe, and this is just from uh, that, you know, handing in both and you know, maybe that the timing isn't like quite what they're looking for on the animatic that you sent in, but they really love the storyboards. You know, that might be something yeah. to consider if, if they see the PDF of it and they're like, yeah, we can work with this guy, you know, based on these boards, I think it would probably behoove yeah. one mm -hmm. to do both, right? Yeah. yeah, not to mention the and animatics a lot of times are being edited and, and put together by someone else. Yeah. So like I never, any of the times I've ever sent in an animatic yeah. of one of my, one of my um, something I've worked on, I've made sure that at least it was a cut that was pre-revised. Uh, gotcha. So it wasn't. I wasn't using someone else's work or someone else's drawings to get mm -hmm. me a job. It's all yeah. me. I want to showcase what <laughs> I'm good at, you know. And you have to specify that. Like I've seen, um, I've seen demo reels where it's like, here's my work, but they don't specify if they did cleanup or you know, I did some cleanup and animation, but they didn't specify. So it's like. You're, you're putting in cleanup work, but you're not acknowledging who animated it or what scenes you did. And it, it, exactly. that gets very, you, how do I know that I'm going to trust you or that I'm hiring? Right. 
hiring you or hiring the person that you whose work you cleaned up. Right. So yeah, team player, man. Yeah. Seriously. And giving credit where credit's due. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> and just to give more of an example to everyone and the person who asked that question, um, usually when you're uh, pitching your board to the whole crew, it's usually a PDF and you're just like arrow keying through the panels, right? And yeah. you're kind of acting out the uh, the show as you as you pitch the board to the yeah. to the um, crew, right? Yeah, that's my favorite part of the job. Yeah, pitching because it's your one chance to kind of be a hammy. <laughs> and that's actually how that's actually how i got my beaky buzzard role was because of uh how i pitched i was gonna ask that yeah yeah i bet you so you were like pitching that episode yeah that short i guess and you were just doing his voice as you were yeah, pitching because i knew because i, I like it i know because some people pitch differently because this is this is going into the topic of pitching now but like people pitch differently you're not expected you don't have to put on a big show and you know mm -hmm. go crazy but i'm a ham so I like to, if I'm going to pitch Bugs Bunny and I know that the dialogue is going to come out a certain way, yeah. and, you know, if Bugs is kind of dialect, you know, yeah. you know that it's, you know, certain words, you know, you phrase it. So like, is it going to be funny coming out of his mouth? Or in the case of Beaky, since he has such a specific voice, <laughs> you, you tailor the dialogue to fit that voice and that delivery and that kind of personality. So when I was doing that board, I was channeling and I did, I looked at video of Edgar Bergen who... Uh, Beaky's based off of the puppet Mortimer Sturd that was Edgar Bergen's puppet mm -hmm. from back in the 30s and I was like trying to get the cadences and the, how he would say things and then when I went in the room I pitched it and they thought it was really funny and kind of spot on and Pete Browngard and Alex Kerwin said hey you should you want to just you sound like him do you want to do the voice that's great and I said I want to earn it I don't want to don't <laughs> just give it don't give it to me so I said let me audition and if someone out there is better and can do it better than I can give it to them, but I'll audition. And I ended up auditioning and they went through like 10 or 12 people and they're like, we like yours. Wow. So I ended up doing Beaky and that was really fun, but that's just because of, I really wanted to sell the gags and make them work. And by doing the voices and, and, and going all out on the, on the pitch, it sold the cartoon. People were laughing. At, and that's another thing too with pitching is that are they laughing at the jokes or are they laughing yeah. at me? <laughs> me delivering the jokes it's not really about the cartoon it's just me acting like a fool like a, mm. like a court jester <laughs> right. the crew. but it's still that's like the one all thing to serve the board right so. yeah. but it's my favorite part i actually enjoy the pitching part a lot more than the actual manual labor of drawing the board <laughs> so uh, let's see okay a uh, question here from eli i love to focus on staging and shot composition in my boards depending on the purpose for the scene. Do you think bold staging should be reserved for action and adventure or can it work in comedy as well? I ask because comedy shows rely more on flat staging to let the characters and humor speak for themselves. I think it depends on the, depends on the gag. I think it's, I think, um, yeah, usually dramatic is, you know, comedy can be dramatic also. Yeah. You know, I've seen that. You see it a lot in some well, of the old, you have an example? Well, no, like I was just going to say, like even, you know, at least I know from, from The Simpsons I've watched, you know, there's quite a lot of dramatic staging and certain parts that really call for it, like, you know, because it is that kind of comedy and that kind of style where like a dramatic staging in the name like of a comedic effect is it, it's done pretty well. Yeah. So I think you can do it if, if it's serving that purpose of, of the joke, you know, uh, by all means, you know. Sometimes yeah. stuff like that turns out pretty funny. Right. So. I think it's about also the clarity of the joke. Like, yeah. does the layout benefit the execution of the joke or of the scene? Does it, does it add to it? You know, I think you can, a, a scene could work just as well in flat staging, but will the joke be elevated? Will it look better? Or will the joke land funnier if yeah. it's from a dramatic angle or if you change it up a little bit? It's, it's up to your kind of discretion as to what you think. It's it's like plussing it. You're making it a little bit better. Yeah. But it, I think it's mm. sort of subjective. You have to just sort of see how it works and plays. Yeah, and the style, etc. I mean, everything yeah. sort of. I think the only thing that's really important, together. right? I think the only thing that's really important about composition is things like shot flow, where like 
if you're going from one shot to another, is it is it a is the transition from shot to shot easy on the eye, or are you making your audience play ping pong and look to the left side of the screen and cut, and then you're at the right, and then you're back here, then you're like, it's like being in the front row of a movie theater and having to do this. Mm -hmm. It's like a good a good storyboard or a good you know sequence is one right. that where your eye is naturally led to look at specific points and then cut, and your eyes already looking there and lead your eye this way, and the composition is you know, it's setting a stage and everything is clear inside of that composition mm -hmm. and it should help convey the story. So I think there's right. leeway there for, for at least composition. I guess a lot of yeah. times when all you're boarding, go ahead, sorry. No, I just said all the eye, eye movement should be done, yeah, through action and through through yeah. getting through the story. None of the eye movement should have to be like work for the audience, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So. I guess a lot of times during boarding, uh, you have to kind of put yourself in the audience's shoes and look at it as an as someone who you know this is their first time seeing it and kind of ignore that you've looked at this twenty times already. Right. You know? Yeah. One of the, one of the things I do is if I'm going through a sequence, what I'll do is I work in Storyboard Pro and I'll shrink, I'll I'll zoom out and I'll have the panel the be like this tiny, mm -hmm. and I'll be like, does the composition work? Mm -hmm. if I squint my eyes and look at it. Does it work? Does it flow? And if it usually, if it's clear enough that I could see it as when it's the size of a post-it or the size of a, of a stamp, then mm -hmm. it's clear enough that it works and it's okay. Yeah. But, That's a cool um, technique. Yeah. Um, this actually flows into the next question pretty well. Uh, how cleaned up are storyboards supposed to be? I imagine it's different from studio to studio, but what, what about is a good uh, general level? Just clear. You know, I've seen boards that are so rough and scribbly, but all the information that needs to be there is there. So it's really yeah. about clarity. Like I think, and this also goes, I think ties in a little bit to design too, is that like, I've seen comedy board, like if you look at a feature board versus a TV board versus a preschool board versus a, you know, a prime time show board, they all have different requirements based on the, every production is different. So like I've seen most like Simpsons storyboards are so unbelievably tight yeah, that it almost makes my stomach knock <laughs> because it's like, I have to clean this up and make the characters perfectly on model, even though we know who the characters look like, or even yeah. though the show is going to be harmony rigged or whatever, like the boards have to be super, super clean. Like that makes no sense to me, but like a good example is, um, on the, in the Christmas special that just came out, Eddie, there's a, there's a board artist named Eddie Trigueros, and he's a director on the Mickey shorts. His boards are so unbelievably loose, <laughs> but all the information is there. Like everything you need, the, the, the expression is there or the clarity of the pose or the clarity of the layout, even if it's not, not every background is perfectly, you know, drawn with every single thing on the wall and, and the perspective is right. It just needs to be clear and mm -hmm. to read. Right. I think having strong it craftsmanship helps. Hmm? No, I think even like like you were saying, like um, as long as it's clear. I mean, for for a character designer, for for example, like we could take we take storyboards of the characters that they give us, and we if, if we they need specific uh, uh, shots poses. or angles that that you know specific yeah you know, specific poses and stuff. Uh, you know, I find the ones I have the, the most fun with are the ones that that are like like the storyboards that are like the loosest and the, like the kind of more like off model. Like, I'm like, this is great, you know? And the, you're translating that into like a more on model thing, but I, it's fun, you know? You get a little because, more leeway with a, with a very rough yeah. pose. <laughs> but not everyone's like that. They're like, I, yeah, I know uh, Simpsons, for example, it's a very, because it's such an old ship, it's a very tight ship, you know? So it's very factory style. Um, but, uh, like I said, I'm very thankful to, you know, work where I'm at. So with, uh, yeah, I get some leeway. I have some fun. So a mm -hmm. little bit. I, I won't mention what show I was on or what board artist I had to tell this to, but I had to tell someone, um, if we can't tell what character we're looking at, your boards are too rough. <laughs> that's yeah, true. Yeah, that's Problem. Yeah, clarity again. Yeah, clarity. And it just like for us, like when we were on Looney Tunes, we had a very, we had one piece of paper that they gave us for like as a guide for the board artists is that um, 
the silhouettes have to be clear. So if a character is talking, don't have things look muddled, have like all the, you know, the negative space, everything be clear so that things read. And um, also just keeping proportions right. So like, mm -hmm. I could tell you, like, if you have a Bugs and Elmer, you know who's Bugs and who's Elmer because Elmer is just a troll doll with no hair and Bugs has <laughs> He really is. Gonna, yeah. He really there's a is. There's a model sheet. I think it's made the rounds. So there's a model sheet of Elmer and uh, we had a model sheet of Elmer that had no clothes on <laughs> because we, if we, it, designers had to do turnarounds with a new costume, whether if he was, if it was a holiday episode or if it's a themed yeah, episode, if he's dressed differently, it's a lot I'm easier right just to have a blank mannequin of the character. Yeah. And um, it's weird seeing uh, if you just he if you just put glasses and silver hair and and put like a glitter filter over Elmer, it just looks like Guy Diamond from Trolls. <laughs> it looks like just just he needs just a big mop of hair. And uh, but yeah, like in a in a storyboard, it's like yeah, you could tell it's Bugs because he's a rabbit. And he's got these two big ears, and Elmer's is big baby headed baby man <laughs> and they look different of course you know elmer's not going to be tall and bugs and you have to just sort of know the you know size and consistency and things right. like that cool. um i always feel bad if i'm pronouncing this wrong from kiana or kiana um how common are jobs in the states for animating compared to overseas not as common as it uh used to be yeah um, most animation, at least in terms of um, mainstream big studio animation, is you know shipped overseas, either to Canada, which is an overseas technically it's over the border. Oh, yeah, it's, but they get up, up yeah, north. But yeah, up north, mm -hmm. uh, or they're sent to uh, Korea or Singapore or the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, but the great thing is, is that at least now in the state of the internet, there's so many independent projects right now. Like I know. The folks from Studio Yada, and mm -hmm. they, most of the people who work at Studio Yada, I mean, some of them are from all over the world, but they're animating from all different parts of the country, and they're working on, you know, they're not just centered in LA, there's people all over the place, people up in Oregon, or people out on, on the East Coast, and um, now I think there's a lot more, there's more, there's, there might, there more mainstream jobs might be sent um, overseas in terms of animation, but at least there's a lot more opportunities now for people and there's more openings and, and avenues for people to animate for independent commercial houses or for independent productions or yeah. independent kind of remote, sure. remote studios. So it's actually right. kind of, um, that's sort of a nice, there's, a, it's always, there's always gonna be, you know, a pro and a con to everything, but that's really kind of a pro and con of that. Yeah. There's uh, Studio Yada does a, obviously, and then Titmouse does a lot of in-house animation. Yeah, they do. Tip, yeah, a lot of the like when I was on BoJack, um, I on the pilot I did a lot of the animate because I finished boards, and then they're like, "Can you animate too?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I can." And so I was animating, you know, down at if it's a non-union studio, there's usually animators down there too working on it, and. Um, so yeah, a lot of the non-union studios, specifically in LA, um, they still animate here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's some animation here. You just kind of have to look for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, from Rick, uh, some people have told me that there is a quote right way to break the 180 degree rule in storyboarding. Some people say you don't break it at all. What is the right way to break it? Should, or should we always adhere to it? I mean, I'm going to let Mike do this one because I actually uh, am also curious. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, I think <laughs> I think it's I think it would be interesting to break the 180 rule. I mean, I'm not a authority on, you know, it has to be done this way. But mm -hmm. it's it's I think the only way if you want to disorient a little bit and, and, and put things at un, a sense of unease on purpose in your board. I think it makes sense to do that. I mean, it's the same as the reason of someone putting things at a Dutch angle or using a different type of lens that screws with the perspective and things like that. It, I think you could find creative ways to break it or at least trans that you can, tr you can find a nice uh, way to transition and, and break the one or flip the 180 degrees without it being too obvious 
you know, or make too many steps. You could find a way to, to have the characters or have the scene flip um, without it being like, oh, the character's walking from this side to the other. You can have the camera from shot to shot gradually turn or, you know, there's probably ways you could do it, but I've never really had a reason. I plan things when I'm boarding, I plan things accordingly so that everything flows and everything works in the thumbnail stage. I plan, I think about all that ahead of time. So I'm, I don't have to break the one at 180 degrees. Right. And again, and it's in, in thinking about your audience, you know, knowing that like the 180 is there so that people don't get so yeah. <laughs> really like, rarely you want people to go but yeah so maybe maybe you do you yeah. know just do it do it wisely yeah also as, as, really, as really think about it yeah and as creatives yeah. we're aware of it like we think about things like the 180 degree rule but the audience is who, uh, you know joe schmo who's going to go and see a movie in a theater or go watch t watch your show on tv they're not going to be conscious of those things mm -hmm. they're going to have an opinion of it and whether it's right or wrong is you know whatever but um most people aren't really going to notice that type of thing or call it out. They might be a little disoriented, <laughs> but they're not going to be like, oh, they broke the 180 degree rule. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. They might be a little disoriented, but they might not know exactly why. They don't know how to codify it. Yet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, uh, Didi, uh, Didi, Didi, what programs do you use for animating? I use, um, I'm, I really love TV paint, which is a French, either French or French Canadian animation program. And I love it. It's, it's the closest I've felt to animating on paper since I've animated on paper. Um, I love TV paint. It's a little pricey, um, but thank God now there's so many different options now, both on either on the iPad or on yeah. the computer, like like Clip Studio Paint. They just, they're doing an update tomorrow and their, their software is amazing. And I hope it knocks Photoshop, I'm not, I'm not being paid for by uh, <laughs> Clip Studio's company, but like you can animate in Clip Studio, and Clip Studio constantly has sales throughout the year. We can get up to fifty percent off, and the program's like twenty bucks. Mm. And um, I I I prefer to work in uh, TV Paint because it's nice. But like normally I work in Storyboard Pro or Toon Boom Harmony nowadays because of the necessity of the job or whatever I'm working on. But those are the kind of the big programs that I use. Okay. Anime. And you I've been messing a around too. in Procreate. Procreate. Just to procreate, you yeah. know, because I'm, I'm not like a big animator. You know, I'm, I just do little whatever. So he, mm -hmm. uh, I look to him, you know, he's got all the, 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 the big toys. <laughs> I have my little, yeah. you know, but hey, actually, you know, it's great. Procreate's awesome, man. Like, um, because of the situation and, and working from home, um, I've done most of it on my iPad with Procreate. Um, just because, like, I live in a little, beep, I don't have a desktop yeah. situation. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it's, you know, it, it, it does its thing. It, it works. So I'm all about, you know, the independent companies and it gets better and better yeah like clip studio and procreate you know companies like that uh so it's not yeah, completely it's, it's not completely monopolized by adobe anymore so it's yeah. kind of nice that yeah you can, that you can um that like yeah i love working and doodling and procreate and it's nice to be able to not be tethered to the, like right now I'm in front of my cintiq at home with my computer set up and everything because that's what i use for work but to know that I have the option now to not be tethered to the desktop and sitting in my chair and hunching over and having mm -hmm. my arm broken. And uh, and I could sit on my couch or in my bed or I can be in the car waiting for a doctor's appointment or something and I could just sit and draw anywhere. That's nice. Like I'm glad that we're getting to the point where we're, we can get mm -hmm. more kind of freedom and we're not completely shackled yeah. to the computer, to the desktop anymore. It's kind of nice and freeing. Yeah. <laughs> that is that's nice. cool that's cool how much variety and different uh techniques there are yeah and more more coming out all the time um we have a looney tunes question for mike from malcolm uh what prompted the decision to give beaky these hilarious mood swings in the latest cartoons oh yeah because he screams a lot 
<laughs> or at least in the cartoon that came out, he, he kind of completely spins 180. And I think that was just in the writer's room. Like we were just sort of like, it'd be really funny to have Beaky suddenly get really mad and scream. And because he, he- But then he just goes back to- Yeah. Because yeah. that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the thing we I love is that we can kind of play with your expectations because you, you see him and he's really, really dumb. Yeah. And then when he suddenly turns, it's like the same as you see him. I think the first time you see those vultures in the first cartoons, they look very menacing and scary. And then you see the one dumb one and it's beaky and it plays up your expectation because he looks vicious. And then he goes, no, 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 can't do it. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, in that one, it's playing your expectations is that you see this kind of shy little guy and then he suddenly gets mad and angry and he actually, and also it makes him more of a threat to bugs. Mm -hmm. for a split second because you think like bugs is just going to take advantage of this idiot and beat the hell out of him <laughs> for seven minutes but then it's nice to know that this character is deceivingly i don't think he's malicious in any way normally but it's kind of mm -hmm. nice to uh, he can be pushed with, yeah you can push him a bit and you know yeah. he wants to make his mob proud so every once in a while yeah. he's got to bring up the bravado and kind of you know he's got to bring dinner home he's yeah. got to bolster it up yeah. <laughs> uh, from KC Raven, uh, when you're storyboarding, how do you keep yourself from getting to a point where you're keyframe animating instead? That's really hard for me because I love <laughs> to animate. Um, so you have to like kind of force yourself to, uh, you have to kind of restrain yourself. Yeah, because yeah. for, for me, like, and this is a big, I think this is, and I think it's valid people's uh, complaints about it now is that we don't, you know, it's not our job to animate. It's the animator's job to animate. It's our job to make, especially for TV, you're making essentially a blueprint with keys that is going to be animated. They want to match as closely as possible. A feature board is very different from a, from a, a TV board in that sense. But um, for me, and it, it's, it's a lot, I feel like it's, it would, it's wrong of me or for people to set a very insanely high bar for other people to, and then other, and then the studios and the heads of the studio are going to see that and expect everyone else to match that level of quality. And a lot of people can't, or a lot of people, it's not in their job description. It's not part of their, they're not, they're not, they shouldn't be animating for me because I come from an animation background. It takes not that much energy for me to put an overshoot or to put a squash drawing or to put a breakdown in there, especially since I know that this thing is going to be animated by someone else. And that's another thing I think about in terms of boards too, is that I know that what I do is being handed off to someone else. And if it makes the editor's job easier, if it makes, and I've asked people like this, if I give you something like this, is it, does it, if, it, if it's too many drawings or too many panels, does it make your job easier? Does it make the, and I've asked animators who've actually animated on stuff that I boarded is it easier? Is it harder? Is it, does it make things more complicated? Does it take the fun out of it? Cause the person's just doing paint by numbers based on what I'm giving them. And yeah. for the most part, most I've heard is that, Oh, it makes, it makes things easier, mm -hmm. but mo a lot of shows don't have like revisionists. A lot, yeah. I, I've worked on shows where there are no revisionists. So you're, you're your own revisionist. Um, but I don't, I have to, I definitely have to do it and I have to definitely now more than ever restrain myself from going all out especially on every not every single shot has to be beautiful i think that's another thing too is that people see these examples on twitter and tumblr and things and it's never usually a whole board it's usually like oh here's a specialty action sequence that needed to be posed out and then but that shouldn't be an example of how they're not functioning at 110 percent for an entire seven minute or 11 minute cartoon it's only for this one little bit and they're proud of it and they're showcasing it but it's not mandatory. It's not part of the job. So I think I, ha I personally try to restrain myself to put it from putting in too many poses, too many breakdowns or uh, overshoots or anything like that, because that's mm -hmm. the revisionist job to go in mm -hmm. and, and see that through. And if the director sees it, they will probably call it out anyway and be like, oh, you know, you know, tell the revisionist, go put, you know, put an overshoot on that, make the characters take a little bit higher and they'll tell them to fix it. But if it, I do it just because it makes, uh, I know when I was doing a, a little bit on Looney Tunes, I knew it made my director's job a lot easier because it can at least call it out and be like, oh, that looks great. And now they have a blueprint so that when it goes to whoever's animating it, that here it is, follow it. Mm -hmm. But gotcha. that was a long-winded answer, I apologize. No, no, <laughs> no, this is what we're here for. <laughs> um, 
this is a good one too. Uh, can you talk about the differences between storyboarding for feature versus TV, um, which I'm interested in too? Um, let's see. I think with, and I've never boarded on a feature, so I can't say from experience, but the thing I've noticed from looking at feature mm -hmm. is that because a lot more leeway is given to the animator on a feature because you set, you're mm -hmm. setting a stage and you're setting, you're telling a story and conveying story points that the drawings don't have to be perfect because the animator obviously is going to take over and, and make that scene work. They're setting a tone and setting a mood and, and, and you know, setting all that emotional build up and then the animator takes it and finesses it. Whereas for TV, again, you're making a blueprint. The thing that you're doing is going to be followed exactly. You have to plan your layouts and plan your, um, your you know, have to design things and, and, and pose it out because what you're giving is essentially a schematic of an episode. Lock, shot for shot, character walks, into, walks in from screen left, looks at something off screen uh, or looks at something on the table, you know, makes it a surprise expression, reaches over, grabs it. Everything has to be meticulously planned out. Yeah. yeah, it's a skeleton, and then the animators are going to be pretty much. Yeah, and then it's shipped to the you know animation yeah. studio and make sure that it's all there for them because like, mm -hmm. the, just the communication back and forth is time and money. Like yeah. more questions from the studio that is animating, the more than you know. Yeah, it's just easier you know the first time around to try and be as clear as possible. Right. Yeah, and feature it's just like. I, I, I looked at, I remember seeing boards for Frozen for the Let It Go sequence, and they're beautiful little paintings, beautiful little individual paintings, but they're not planning every single motion right. of Elsa. That's, that's up to the, to the animator and up to the director to kind of choose how the shots are going to progress from a cinematic point of view in the, or in a technical point of view. But like it's up to the board artist to, or the story artist in that sense to, um, uh, set the tone and, and, and yeah just... the the emotion the emotional content of yeah sort there's of a lot there. more there's a lot more leeway definitely yeah because yeah i think it's almost like uh, yeah as a, as a tv story artist it's almost like you're taking in essence a different role in that sense because you're you also have to be part of like you know feeding the machine because the machine goes way quicker right way quicker than feature yeah, you're so, giving you're giving a little bit of you're giving something to like oh this character's wearing a certain outfit well I have to design the outfit a rough sense but it's up to the designer to just flesh it out I'm yeah. coming up with a layout I'm coming up with or I'm planning in the sense like oh I have to be economically conscious I can't have 15 million backgrounds in this cartoon so I need to plan my shots accordingly so I can use mm -hmm. as little backgrounds as possible and then those are sent off to the background person to figure out but we're coming up with essentially a rough blueprint for all those other departments that come after us mm -hmm. and then it all comes together and looks very pretty on the on the front i think the only thing and for good reason because this we, don't, we only have so much time as it is um the color stylists are so important because we're working in black and white so right. like it's up to them to like thank god they don't ask us to do any color <laughs> once that happens i'm done like once the studio's like we demand we you have Colored to color storyboards. color and ink your boards i'll be like i'm done this i no. <laughs> unless you pay me i'm you should already be paying us like two or three jobs work i mean that's that's another thing too i don't like doing scrubbing or or, or editing on a board i don't want to time anything out and and do rough dialogue and scratch on my boards just because it's not my job. I have, there's only so many hours in the day. I can't do it all. And there are editors. Oh, I see a cat. Ripley's, Ripley's yeah. here. Oh, my cat is sleeping in the corner <laughs> and being good. Usually when I'm on the phone or in a zoom call or in a meeting, yeah. he's always coming up and meowing. But <laughs> so. She always has to make a cameo every stream. <laughs> yeah. Prima Donna's. Um, uh, this is really interesting. This is from Beckett. Hey guys, I'm only 11, but I'm just starting to learn about animation. It's what I want to do when I grow up. Can you tell me briefly where storyboarding fits in the whole process? Right at the very beginning. Yeah. It's everything starts from there. Well, it do I the say story. first, I'm sorry? <laughs> um, yeah. 
No, I mean, hey, uh, it's 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 way cooler than than a lot of things. You know, I'm glad <laughs> to draw for a living. That's pretty yeah. cool. Um, I lived in uh, a junkyard and dug ditches, so like, I'd rather be doing this than that. <laughs> yeah, hey, man. <laughs> I nah, it could be so much worse. Yeah. So, um, but uh, so far as the storyboarding, I mean, uh, it would be after obviously, like you know. Um, well, it depends because sometimes uh, if you have a storyboard driven show, maybe different than, you know, a show script that's driven completely by uh, a, a, a script. Usually it's a script of some sort that goes first, you know, whether it be the, the complete, you know, with, uh, with, with all the dialogue and et cetera, et cetera. Um, or in a storyboard driven show, usually you would give the um, like the directors or whatever, give them kind of a basic outline of like, hey, this episode, you should have these characters do this and this. But like as for specifics, like the, 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 the time, the jokes, uh, everything that you see on the screen, basically, uh, like the, the minimum dialogue, uh, all that's done by the board artist. Um, yeah. So you can you can go either way, really. Yeah. Um, and uh, as far as as a designer, in my case, um, sometimes the board artists need us to have design a design beforehand that hasn't been designed yet, that's in the script, that hasn't, you know, they're like, oh, we need this, you know, design before the board artists can work because it's a very specific, you know, uh, interacting with all the other characters. And uh, that's usually when I'll do a, a, you know, a rough, rough design for them to work with. Um, and it's cool too because it's like, you know, then you know the needs of the board artist because uh, it's the way that they interpret and and sort of simplify that character. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of tells me, okay, this is what we're, is working for them. This is not what's you know what's working for them. Um, <clears throat> and then, so yeah, I mean, like you would do some designs, I guess, simultaneously. You would do some before the boarding but you know we're, and 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 then you have i guess if you're just doing boards but if you're doing boarding in like a a program where you're also you know timing it and making an automatic then it's like you know where do voices go in you know yeah michael <laughs> usually uh after we after you write everything mm -hmm. and then you and then you record the actors after it mm -hmm. yeah ideally we have the the voice actor records before the storyboard so the storyboarders can draw to the kind of draw to the voice the of like whatever's going yeah. on right yeah. yeah like i know usually like on looney tunes you'd write the cartoons as well as board them at the same time so we would write a cartoon and we do there wouldn't be they usually wouldn't record a scratch track normally unless it's there's pickups and stuff but then the board is done and then the actors record based on what they see in the board and then mm. the revisionist will go in and be like oh you know so and so put a, a little bit of an inflection here on this piece of dialogue or here uh, the board doesn't really reflect that can you go in and flip and change the drawing so that it matches the dialogue read right so and then there's other shows where um you work to a teleplay and you're given a teleplay and has all the all the the thing was written and the actors recorded it and then you're just boarding to the dialogue, even mm -hmm. timing wise, what they want. I remember on Bojack, that was usually how things were done on Bojack, at least on the first season on the pilot. But um, every show is different. You know, it depends on who's running it and what their disciplines are and what they're used to. Mm -hmm. so. I hope we helped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can only hope. Welcome to the club. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, from Blue, how much would you say working on comics and web comics helps in later getting into storyboarding, both as a portfolio and for experience? I'm not very good at comics, but I know a lot of board artists who came from doing illustration and comics. Yeah. So I think it helps. It helps with composition for sure, and it helps with draftsmanship, and I think storytelling, because a comic is very similar to a storyboard. Yeah, storyboard you just have to flesh out more mm -hmm. drawings. You know, that's the thing that that blows my mind with comics. People who do comics because I'm so used to being able to animate and progress and have 
an emotional scene take place over multiple poses and, and expressions and things. Whereas a comic artist has to figure out how to lump that all together into a into one drawing, into a panel, yeah, or a very few <laughs> panels, and also somehow fit in word bubbles and somehow compose inside of a very small box. Yes, yeah. Which to me is like very constricting because I'm so used to being able to move the camera anywhere I want and having a scene last as long as possible. So, but I think any, you know, another arrow in your quiver in the sense that it, it helps with certain disciplines. I think it helps with any job to have an understanding or at least a basic grasp of other diff, other mediums or other ways of creating art, whether it be comics or painting or design or what have you. So. It struck me recently how constricting it must be to have like a newspaper strip and only have three or four panels to tell the thing you want to say. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's why they do it and I don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they know how to do it. Uh, from Bianca, uh, in a portfolio, is it bad uh, is it bad to have character designs of characters from live action shows? For example, I did character designs of Shit's Creek characters and did turnarounds and expressions of them. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a bad thing. No, um, man. I uh, I had community characters in my portfolio. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because it's also seeing how you adapt, how you adapt. Exactly. Characters yeah. to or real people. Yeah. yeah. So. Because yeah. anything that helps you with the uh, you know caricature and that that right. branch of uh drawing yeah <laughs> yeah i i enjoy seeing those sometimes it's really neat because you you know you know what the reference is to like why that but it's obvious like you know that the interpretation you can kind of as a character designer it's fun seeing like how people in in interpret like that into into a drawing into a design mm -hmm. um yeah it's fun it's really cool uh, from Chase, what's the most important aspect of a storyboard artist portfolio? Um, just showing off your chops in regards to having understanding of cinematography and composition, um, being able to clearly convey uh, story points and posing. Um, I'm trying to think what else would be good. So clarity, clarity is the big one. Yeah, clarity and, and it's good to have variety. Yeah. To show what you're you know what you're capable of. Right. Can you draw and can you draw backgrounds? Can you draw, you know, characters? Can you, mm -hmm. you know, plan camera moves and, and you know, arrange yeah. shots and stuff like that? Yeah, if you can draw backgrounds, you know, you instantly have an advantage over a board artist who might not be able to necessarily do backgrounds. Right. I've seen um <laughs> i can't draw backgrounds to save my life backgrounds uh, are scary and daunting background <laughs> people like bless man i you know, they're like from another planet of like I've, superhumans and it's well yeah superhumans but like you know i've had conversation with background people they're like you know it's like well what you do fascinates me because i have no clue i wouldn't mm. know the first thing about designing a character i'm like really well, like, right. well wow. and i mean yeah. like in in essence the background is a character you know it's yeah. important uh, it, 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 in an emotional sense, a lot of the time. So, but yeah, I'm 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 just just as blown away uh, by people <laughs> who can you know that that pull this stuff. Oh my, oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that also, is not my forte. It also is just dip, dip people's different disciplines. You know, like yeah, you know, a background artist has different disciplines than a you know someone who does boards or animation or someone who does character design i mean some of them you know cross pollinate maybe you know they have similar disciplines but like for someone like me who's not very good at doing nice fleshed out beautiful backgrounds um it's 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 like a completely yeah it's almost alien like how the hell do you do that but <laughs> it's because i wasn't trained that way and it's also not pretend it's not really one of my passions or my interests so i never really yeah delved in it like other people do but they're the one like i love the concept there's a, there's a term for it but I see a lot of, uh, when I see a design, like a background design, and it looks like it's lived in, which is something that I see in a lot of early, like not in portfolios per se, but like I remember in college, there was like, we had to take a layout design classes and you would see couches and tables and 
chairs and lamps or whatever, but it looks like an Ikea catalog. Like no one has ever sat in that chair. Mm, I got gotcha. you. The background yeah. is telling the story like, oh, the chair sags to want that cushion is sagging because the person always sits on that one side. Uh -huh. there's, there's nicks in the coffee table because the thing is, you know, made of, you know, parka board and it's 15 yeah, You can tell old. all sorts of stories just by the way a table looks, you know, yeah. like, yeah. So but it, even like just trying to be like, okay, how much, how do you know to, to design like a messy bedroom? Yeah. Without it looking too intentional. And what, what is the age of the person in that bedroom? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Is it a messy, is it a messy four-year-old or is it a messy 65 year old, you know, <laughs> is, the, is like, the mess, is the mess spurned by anger or by depression? <laughs> like where does it yeah. come from or laziness? Who knows? Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, great. Awesome. Uh, uh, sorry, Fleur, Fleur, in your experiences, uh, do places of education focus more on qualifications or portfolios when choosing students? Hmm. Well, wouldn't qualifications also kind of factor into portfolio because a por portfolio shows what your qualifications are in regards to how skilled, your art, skilled you are as an artist? Is that I kind suppose. Of um, Wait, do places of education focus more on? Yeah, um, I, I would assume that schools uh, focus more on qualifications or portfolios. Because I mean, like, your portfolio is your qualification. I so. think so. Yeah, that's what I would, yeah. I would think is that your portfolio is yeah. essentially my, it's the equivalent of your, your artistic resume. Yeah. I would think. Your art is it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <clears throat> at the end of the day, I mean, you can say you went to this school and you can say you graduated this and blah, blah, blah. At the mm. end of the day, I'm sorry, but that's not, it's your portfolio. That's yeah. what, that's the communication. That's the way you got to communicate is through the art. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've a lot you of people. Can have, you can have, I mean, yeah, once you get, you know, once you've, you've had enough work and you, you can put that on, you know, a resume. Yeah, that's great. Um, but uh at the end of the day it's like if you're if you're you know if, if you're if you're not you can have done all sorts of stuff but at the end of the day it's it's about the style of the show mm -hmm. and whether or not like your stuff in the portfolio is like that guy would be perfect for it or you know she would be perfect for it so it's like it, it's really kind of more up to that than you know yeah and particular. actually, let me ask the next question because it flows right into what we're saying here. Uh, Tony okay. asks for a storyboard, uh, digital portfolio, um, slideshows, animatics, or contact sheets. Um, I also kind of just wanted to ask, bring in that question because um, I think just, you know, these days, I, I, you know, your portfolio should probably be a website over a physical, yeah. you know, folder yeah. with stuff in it. Right. I know, like when you when they say contact sheets, do they just mean your contact information? Like contact sheets, I don't really understand. Tony, like if you me. want, to, if you want to um, clarify, clarify that in the chat, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, like the last the last two times I've gone up for jobs, um, all I did was I sent the I I I made a Google Drive folder with, yeah. with stuff on it. I don't know how to make a website. I know there's so many every every two websites I go to always has like, I made my website through blank and it was very easy, like it's yeah. a commercial. And it's like, I don't have the patience to do that. I don't know, I, that's, that takes, I would, I would run myself ragged trying to plan that. I should have one, uh, a designated space so people can look at my art and, and, and see my reel and things like that all in one place. But the last couple job job times I've applied for jobs, I've literally just sent in, uh, I made a, a Google Drive or a Dropbox mm -hmm. folder and I had it so that only the person viewing it could could see the the stuff on there, and they couldn't down they could download it or they could just view it, and then I just send them a link to that. And if I tell them if there's any problems opening that thing, just let me know, and I could send you the files individually. But cool. that's all I've really used. But I okay. usually just but I do, you know, if they want to see, uh, if I have the opportunity to ask, I'll be like, do you want a PDF? Do you want animatics? And most of the time they say, send in whatever you want, send both. Mm -hmm. so, so you don't you don't even need a. a fancy pretty you know designed website it might you help just have a uh, but, but yeah i mean yeah i you mean you just have a google drive of of uh, files and stuff 
Yeah, because it is essentially a, just a, a, a space to view your stuff. Yeah. So it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be, you know, in a nice fancy shell. It just needs to be there. And that's kind of ni the nice thing about Google Drive too, is that you're not you're not wowing them by a beautiful website. You're wowing them just based on the content of what yeah. you're giving them. Exactly. So, so. I, I always like whenever I need like, um, you know, oh, I need a storyboard revision esque or I need like uh, another animator or whatever for all in scoops. Um, I always write on Twitter and I'm like, you know, hey, uh, anybody wants to apply, just drop your portfolio here. And I always love just everyone submits their stuff. And if you just go to anybody's portfolios websites, it's like, it's all great places to, to figure out like, you know, what to have on your uh, portfolio site, what, what it could look like, you know, what to include. So um, everybody, you know, here in the chat and everything, uh, I don't know, I say it every episode, but like, I find Twitter a really good uh, source of, um, you know, artists and um, kind of learning from other other people sharing their stuff online. Yeah. Um, and then, oh yeah, so hopefully we answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> Tony said making contact sheets in Photoshop. Um, but I'm not, I'm not I sure. See, I, when I think contact sheets, I think of ways to contact the artist. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think of, when I think of, I don't know, I, maybe, it, maybe it's because it's a different, I never heard that term before in regards yeah. to portfolios. So I apologize. Hopefully, I hopefully we hit on that. Yeah. Um, uh, question for Erica from Malcolm. Um, as somebody who is currently taking a break from animation, what is the best way to stay motivated and inspired to build your portfolio or make art in general? I guess like later on after um, their break ends. Uh, since since you, you, uh, cause you mentioned you took a break. Early, yeah, early in your career yeah yeah well that was for like a few years so okay. um uh for me it's just like you, you, you just getting off of social media is one thing uh and and like you know uh, drawing from from just what's around you and like mm -hmm. your own experiences and not trying to you know uh I'm not trying to like compete with somebody else's you know, sometimes it gets really stressful because I see this some people, oh, like, I have to draw like this or, oh, I have to, like, sure. draw like that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, I mean, and only draw, you know, when you feel like it, at, yeah. you know, at this, at this stage. Don't you push know? yourself. Don't push yourself. Don't force it. Don't force it. Because so um, be then you'll just, you'll not only draw bad, but you'll upset yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes it takes, you know, uh, like, I, yeah, I took a break and I went and had some adventures and learned a bunch of new stuff and did some life living. And then I came back. And to tell you the truth, I'm a much better person for it. You know, right. I take a lot of like experiences I learned with, you know, uh, working with people or being with people and using that uh, like to, to sort of, you know, uh, be cool about relationships with people and stuff in the office and you know just i don't know just, you really have focused on just focus on yourself and focus on yourself focus on your, your your health um yeah. and and let let your experiences you know inspire you so like once you get to the point where like yeah focus on on doing what's best for yourself mm -hmm. and then let that inspire you so. Remember, if you don't if you don't have your health or your mental health, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. Yeah. So make sure you have that first. Yeah. yeah. Especially <laughs> in this industry. Oh my gosh, please. Yeah. You know, <laughs> take care of yourself. Yeah. Really who knew, who knew that? Who knew that an industry of making cartoons could be so goddamn <laughs> stressful? <laughs> From Pasha, how does a freelance storyboard artist work differently from a, stu from a studio storyboard artist? And um, same question, but during uh, COVID lockdown and all production happening over Zoom. Um, well, from a fr freelance, I don't really do freelance anymore, but like I know that for someone like me who's used to working in a studio, um, 
I miss being in the studio and actually interacting with my crew and getting an answer immediately just by going to someone's office and asking Same a question here. Yeah. and not like I sent a message to someone and they might not, who knows, they might have their storyboard pro or whatever program they're working with open and, and their chat is behind it. So they won't even answer my question for two or three hours. And I'm just sort of yeah. sitting there wondering what's going on. I like, and also I'm one of those people that I feel motivated more to work and to create and I get better ideas when I'm bouncing ideas off other people or if I'm even in the same room as other artists yeah. and even just through kind of like photosynthesis, yeah, yeah. photosynthesis of just being around other artists, I just sort of absorb and I feel motivated to do that, to, to keep working. Whereas when I'm working from home and thank, I'm, thank God I have a space, I have a two bedroom apartment. So I'm not, my bedroom and my studio are from two completely separate rooms and I don't have my studio, my computer in the same room as my bed. Okay. Because that, I used to do yeah. that. I used to have that situation and it's not good for your mental health and it sucks getting up, walking six feet, going to a computer for 12 hours, getting up, going six feet to your bed and falling asleep. Yeah. Like that's so detrimental. I, over the last, how long has it been now? Like nine months of COVID. I've learned to kind of get used to it. And I figured out also this year I've gone, I, I think it's thing too. COVID has definitely made me more, um, more in tune with myself in terms of my mental health, my emotional health, my physical health. And I've found ways to combat that sort of uh, lack of productivity mm. by doing different things. Like I, I do intermittent fasting. I drink a lot more water. I take breaks and walk away from my desk a lot more. I, yeah. I, you know, I try to balance it out. But like working, I, I do miss, I can't wait till we're able to go back and work in a studio space. But I give kudos to people who can work from home remotely and it's probably going to be much more common now mm -hmm. after covid i know a lot of studios are planning for you know people working you know two days at home three days in the office or three days in the office and one day at home or whatever it is you know accommodating for people and i hope that leads to a lot more freelance jobs for people who are not within like 30 miles of la it would be right. nice to know that some person who wants to get into animation that lives in i don't know uh, portland oregon or in Texas or wherever can still work on shows and it's all the chance. Yeah. Right. You know, so I, I do hope for that, but I'm just trying to keep myself afloat. Every, I mean, it's, it doesn't help that the lighting in this, my, my lighting right now makes me look creepily underlit, like I'm a, <laughs> like a warlock over a cauldron. It makes me look really, it brings out every single like bag under my eye and it doesn't like look a warlock flat. under a spinning plate. Like you were yeah. talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. Like, so, yeah. I, I, there. Yeah, Warlock who does children's parties and magic tricks. <laughs> Your lamp. Sorry for, the, sorry for that was a roundabout way of answering that question. No. But. <laughs> Thank you. I hope I've got it correct. This is the same process with pitching, no matter freelance or not. Yeah. I really like that. Um, I, I enjoy that um, people can... Yeah, you know, it's just it's just proven that you don't have to live in Los Angeles yeah. to to be to get into this industry now. Yeah. Um, it's sort of never been, but it's sort of taken this uh, pandemic to get people to kind of realize it. It's definitely I and I I was talking about this with Erica the other day. Is that in a way COVID was sort of the kick in the pants that we all collectively as a society sure. needed. Kind of yeah. It. We were getting way too comfortable and taking things way too for granted. So now mm -hmm. it makes us kind of reevaluate ourselves and how we function. And hopefully we become more socially empathetic <laughs> and things hopefully. work out better. Hopefully. We hope that we don't <laughs> fall into the, I mean, obviously like we had a pandemic in the, in the teens in the early aughts and that was a hundred years ago and, you know, history repeats itself, but hopefully we can, at least in the immediate future, the next five, 10, 20 years, we recall this incident, the lost year of 2020. And we can <laughs> remember like, well, you know, I'm gonna be more health conscious. I'm gonna be more, you know, hopefully it leads to more jobs and more people getting to work and things like that. And yeah. We have a lot of questions left. I'll try to ask them a little quicker. Yeah. Um, I'll, I don't try to answer, I'll try to answer sure. them a little quicker too. 
lightning round. <laughs> uh, Victoria asks, how important are breakdowns in a story portfolio? If you can show that you have a good sense of acting and posing with less poses, is that enough on its own? I would say so. I think that most times if people are going to be looking at a PDF and if anyone has scrolled through a PDF and the thing isn't fully loaded, there'll usually be like a weird white flash or a load between going from one page to another. If you have a lot of key, a lot of drawings or a lot of poses for an action, you're not really going to be able to see it move. Sure. You're going to see the first pose. If someone's going to swing a bat, you're going to see this and you're going to see the afterwards where they swing and hit it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to draw the contact or all that. It's, it's again, like you don't need to animate your boards, right. but for the sense of displaying it or showcasing it, I think it's better. That's why I'm, ha I'm thankful that I just, I did a board test about three months ago and they have panel limits. They say like, mm -hmm. oh, can you tell this in, in 30 to 40 panels, which is great oh, because it, it keeps me from wanting to go in and add extra poses and just think about what are the most important drawings? What are the key drawings, the storytelling drawings, what needs to be shown and just show that. And then that is the, that will show the strength of following one, also following direction based on what was the, the directions that were given in the test or whatever your job is. And two, just being able to economize and get the point across with as few mm -hmm. drawings as possible. Yeah, cool. exactly. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, <laughs> I agree. From Waverly, uh, what animation software do you recommend learning for 2D or 3D and storyboarding? Uh, I guess storyboard is sort of a pro, right? That's the is industry that standard is storyboard pro. Yeah. But a lot of uh, different productions, they some of them, some of them use, um, photo, I think, a, at DreamWorks, do they use Photoshop for boards? Yeah, we're still used. Oh, for Photoshop, no. We're we're uh for for the story, no. They're on they're on. They use Storyboard Pro. Pro okay. Yeah, that's the industry standard. Because what do you, and, and for design, what do you? I guess it's, they, they still have us on Photoshop, man. I mean, that's yeah, it's fine for me. That's everything I need. Yeah. So, I mean, but, the more pro, the more programs you know, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, the more the better. Yeah. So, um. So that helps with jobs too. Is that like, oh, I know, I know Photoshop, and I know After Effects, and I know this, and I know that. I know Toon Boom, and I know that. that's more. Oh, they know how to use the software, or they know how to use other software. You know, that's great. That's, they have, they're knowledgeable, and they've studied. Cool. So the more you know, I would say. So yeah, I say Storyboard Pro for storyboards, and then I guess for um, for animation software, um, uh, like you said, TV Paint. Um, Adobe yeah. Animate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Adobe so, Animate is anybody can get their hands on Flash or Animate a lot easier. I think Clip Studio is a good one too, because at least anybody can use it if they want to do design. They can also animate in the same program that they're designing in, and they can do yeah. color yeah. in something like Clip Studio. Because in Photoshop, you can animate in Photoshop, but it's a little the animation tools in that aren't as. Uh, they're, they're limited. Very limited. I mean, you know, they're, they yeah. are in most, you know, that, yeah. that aren't, aren't specifically for animation right. but also you know guys there's you know tv paint and toon boom these are really expensive mm -hmm. programs right yeah you know they're you know i know what studios when use. i was younger there was no way in hell i would have been able to afford any of it yeah um, so uh but so so far as like i'm, I'm just going to shoot a question as you know really quick like as far as like if i'm totally like beginning storyboarding like like, is there like a free or cheaper program out there that I could use to like just practice? Or do you guys know any? I would. I, it's, um. <laughs> the, the thing is, is that there's a lot of um, free drawing software like Fire Alpaca mm -hmm. and um, maybe not Draw Pile. That's not really the best example. But there's a lot of free drawing software that you probably yeah. could, as long as you know what composition is of the panels that you're working with if they're eight you know 16 by 9 you know hd 1080 by whatever um you could use any drawing program but there's a lot of free there's a, there's a lot of free ones someone says i use procreate to storyboard yeah and procreate's only yeah. 10 bucks open tunes with a z okay. is open yeah. source yeah i haven't used open tunes but i know of it <laughs> And you can search on lynda.com for tutorials. L-Y-N-D-A.com. Cool. Nice. So there's a good amount of uh, options there. Uh, uh, from Casey Raven, when you need to draw on a, on a, sorry, when you need to draw on a character model, what are some tricks you've learned to help yourself stay on model? Hmm. Ooh, well, I mean, um, 
a size ratio is probably um, probably most of the key components because I mean any any character set you're going to make you want to make sure that they all have a nice different silhouette and even with trolls it's really hard because <laughs> like you know it's like okay it could have just like this hair but usually the hair is like <laughs> all over the place yeah. and making sure that um that the character when they're designed uh you know that they're going to be interacting with other characters and so like you can't have like a giant freaking hat that's gonna <laughs> like make it impossible to put them in a shot with other people you know like mm. with other characters um yeah taking that into account uh, but as far as like keeping on model it's it's first the first thing i do if it's really like i know i'm going to be drawing this character quite a bit um once you've established a design uh draw the character um just like loosely draw the character like emoting from different angles um so you know exactly how like uh you know different parts of the face um the expressions cheeks nose whatever etc cetera, etc cetera. um you know stuff there if there's a consistency um mm -hmm. so uh usually yeah it's just me trying to um make sure i remember like uh which particular um set of uh because because troll bodies at least for for what i'm doing like there's not a lot of difference between you know i can get away with uh um like the pop trolls like a very specific it's like a light bulb you know with little trunk mm -hmm. trunk legs and little puffy feet and little puffy you know hands and stuff um and so far as like those particular like that that uh the ana anatomy and the, the 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 spacing um i can i can get away with like stretching them out a little bit making them a little bit taller and whatnot but even i get flack for that sometimes there's too human man mm -hmm. uh but um i've probably completely veered off the question other than, oh, no, yeah, it's yeah it's, no, you're fine. <laughs> spatial spatial reasoning yeah just making sure that that the uh yeah that you're uh you, you know kind of this the the character's specific like what makes that character stand out you mm -hmm. know and uh you know make sure it's consistent i, I wouldn't know i don't know how to find it online but i remember i, I remember i've seen a lot of people um on twitter uh it is like a chart and it's like you know, draw your character a whole bunch of times, but there's a whole, here's a whole bunch of moods, you know, happy, sad, angry, confused, uh, heartbroken, mm -hmm. ecstatic, excited. And then you're just drawing, that's like a good kind of practice for drawing, yeah. you know, Agreed. your character with a whole bunch of different emotions. And that's how you can kind of figure out <clears throat> how their face works. And, and yeah, like, like I've, I've used it myself, yeah. you know, yeah. so. I know for me, <laughs> for animating, oh, sorry. No, I'm good. I'm good. Silence. Saying, no, sorry. <laughs> I know that for me, for boarding and animating, and the thing that's helped me kind of learn to kind of get used to drawing a specific character, especially with the characters like the Looney Tunes or in, uh, to a lesser extent Cuphead, is um, I draw them a lot to the point where I come up with a shorthand. So I know like, yeah, oh, sure. I know that now I know like, oh, this, you know, Bugs is these shapes. And I know that to break yeah. it down to a simplest form, that's Bugs, that's Daffy, that's Porky or that's Cuphead, that's, you know, Cuphead and Mugman are relatively the same, except their noses and their eyes and stuff, <laughs> and, their, and their straws. But then, like, the devil is different than drawing sure. Cuphead or Mugman or what have you. So it's like, if I draw them enough times, and also, like, when I'm animating for myself, or I'm designing a character for myself, sometimes what I'll do is I'll animate loosely, and then it'll almost conform, like, I'll come up with all the shorthands as I'm animating and be like, oh, now I'm figuring out all the kinks in the design and some things that I thought were nice oh, this is a pain to animate or this isn't working or I don't like drawing this and it disappears yeah. or it changes shape. So that's another yeah. thing. That's another way I kind of either get used to a design or uh, conform to a design and get used to drawing it. Drawing. And, it's, and it's... Hmm? Oh, I was just saying there was a great little thing and I, I remember showing this to a friend of ours recently, but there's a thing I saw on DeviantArt that says how to draw everything. And it's mm -hmm. like how to, it starts with how to draw like a shrimp and it starts with tracing the shrimp and then looking at reference of a shrimp and then trying to remember the reference of the shrimp. And then over time, you could just remember just from muscle memory and all that stuff, how to draw a shrimp.
but that goes for anything. Well, the first thing they tell you to do is just draw what you think a shrimp is just like right Right. off the top of your head. Yeah. You know, it's like, and so it's really fun when, you know, going through the whole thing and seeing like what you can do, like at the end, considering, I don't know, sometimes it's, it's, it's comically funny. Yeah. I think it's just called how to draw anything. And it's a great little, like, it's a little, not a PDF, but it's like a, like a, like a stretched out tutorial thing. I think it was either on Tumblr or DeviantArt, but I have that saved somewhere that I always look at every once in a while for a little inspiration to remind myself, oh yeah, just do this. And that helps. So, mm-hmm. oh, someone just actually posted in the chat how to draw anything. Cool. So, oh, cool. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> um, a question from Rick. Should character designs be extremely clean and colored? I'm assuming they mean final designs. Uh, who or what? Who or what is the way to have a portfolio review done for a character design? Sorry. Who or what's the way to have a portfolio review done for a character design portfolio? So, how do you get someone to view your portfolio, or how and to have a portfolio way? review done for? A, I, yeah, I think it's how how uh, what who is the go, way? Who do you who do you go to and and how do you review for a review, major? I think yeah. But then the first question is: Should character designs be extremely clean and colored? Um, again, it really depends on what the show. But like for a por- por- portfolio, obviously, it's it's all again clarity. Um, yeah. And and uh, and it, it even again from the difference between designing for a feature is very different than designing for for TV. You know, like a uh, feature gets to have you know, a lot more leeway and fun, like, like, you know, Michael was talking about uh, story artists, um, you know, it, it's about, yeah, designing the feeling and they get to use awesome, like, they can use whatever they want so far as, uh, um, my gosh, I'm like totally blinking out on words right now. Um, uh, like, they, they, they don't have to, like, stay constrained as much as, like, it with TV, um, when I'm designing, uh, yeah, I basically, uh, I'll do, I'll do some rough stuff. If, like I said, if it's, a uh, um, pre storyboard, um, but it, obviously it has to stay clear and all the information needs to be there. Um, I'm not the best actually with doing super clean lines. I'm lucky enough that I have uh, a cleanup artist. Um, so, and sometimes, you know, people are wor- willing to work with you on that if they see that you're an amazing designer. You know, so uh, for I, I would say have a mix, you know, yeah. have some that's, you know, rougher shows kind of like, you know, what your thought process is. And then, you know, for a lot of TV, you know, they want to see something that that's, again, a lot of uh, a lot of, of turns, a lot of turns. That's that's uh, that that's always nice to look at shows that you um, understand things. Uh, at least in dimension, whether even if it's a flat design, you know, that still applies. Um, but yeah, and then, so if, 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 if you're really talented at, at doing clean lines, you know, make sure you have some clean stuff in there as well. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily like 100% necessary to go one way or the other, you know? I would, you know, a variety, as long as, like I said, clarity, because it's always fun to look at, like, you know, I always love looking at previs, you know, stuff in any book or whatever. And and sometimes in in TV, I can get away with doing some of that kind of stuff. Like I said, you know, uh, if I'm designing very new characters in the very beginning, I got to do a lot of that. But then like after a while, it's okay, let's buckle down. And then it's all about, because harmony is, you know, it's like I have to draw every little, you know, piece of everything. But I'm, I'm doing a lot of. Then you, you hunker that character down, and and, and you do the turns. Mm-hmm. You know, you make sure you know what the uh, animators know, what the arms, and you know, different. Everything looks like at a different angle. Um, uh, so it's 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 really expressing all of that, you know, in in your portfolio one way or another cool 
It's Ooh. a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's oh, communicate, oh, clear communication, clear yeah. communication. Uh, and also a question for Erica from Victoria. Do you have any suggestions for using Procreate for storyboarding? Um, actually, Michael, like uh, I did a little bit like you can you can use storyboards like I tried using it um, with like the layering file system, but there's only so many you could use, right, Michael? Yeah, like, I, I haven't found, eventually I hope Procreate comes up with a way to do like a tiered layering system. So like each yeah. panel is a bunch of layers and you can work on it like you would in say Storyboard Pro or something else. Because when you're working with, you know, bitmap, bitmap tools and, and things like programs that are made specifically to make like finished art or drawings and, you know, mm -hmm you're kind of trying to shoehorn animation or storyboarding kind of tools into a program that was never intentionally made to be an animation program yeah. or, or a production program. So it's just, um, at this point- It's really, I, it's really not a good way, yeah. Yeah, eventually, not yet. It, I hope so soon. Cause I mean, their, their animation tools are getting a bit better and better every update. So hopefully they'll mm -hmm. incorporate something like that in there. Cause it's, it would be once, once I, can, I can do storyboards without having to sit at a computer, I'll throw my Cintiq away. No, I'll probably, um, <laughs> I'll, I, I could just board on the couch. Mm. When, I, when I get to the point where I can just board on a couch and, sit and do my boards sitting on a couch, I'll be like, that's it. That's the only way I'm working now is on a couch. Because I can't do it. I'm, I, can't, I can't do this forever. All right, let's see if we can do the 10 remaining questions in 10 minutes. Let's, yeah, let's do it. Lightning round, lightning, Fl lightning. Floor asks, What's the most fun part of storyboarding and designing for each of you? Um, I'll say really quickly, I said it before, pitching is my favorite, but um, one of my favorite things to do. Uh, but I really love brainstorming with a story and gags from my, with my director. Like on Looney Tunes, I was with David Gemmel and we had a very good rapport and we'd take a gag and we'd just plus it and make it better and make it better and make it better and we'd laugh and come up with really creative ideas and when you have that brainstorm it, it, you kind of get that feeling of like oh oh i got an idea oh well, let's do this yeah mm -hmm. that's great and then it just it, it feeds that and yeah. it, it's invigorating for me the actual manual labor of drawing of doing the board drawing it is my least favorite part <laughs> i don't i don't like like drawing is okay but i yeah. actually like the brainstorm and i like and the pitching uh, pitching the stuff so in the middle and after <laughs> yeah the stuff in the middle i could design I right design is similar in that sense though you know because it's like like i said you know the very beginning i get to do the the, the fun rough like actually designing the character out and uh, mm -hmm. that's always fun like getting the you know hey the directors or the you know oh yeah we need you know uh, this type with you know blah, blah, and and just like feeding all that in and, and like kind of like filling in the holes and whatnot and 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 taking opportunity to you know because i actually do design i I do initial design stuff in color. We have we have color people that you know often, um, you know that the colors are are usually changed at some point. But it's just easier for me to do initial designs like in color because sometimes I work with shape as opposed to line, um, cool. and uh, I have a lot of fun with that. It's so much yeah. fun, <laughs> um, and it's fun to see like you know the looks on the faces of of your you know of your directors and your uppers when they're like, oh, this is great. It's like, oh, so. <laughs> yeah. yes, it works. It's always a good um, <laughs> yes, always a good feeling. Um, but yeah, and then later on when it's like time to do uh, the, 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 the turns and the, you know, the more that kind of stuff is like, uh, you know, but it's oh, yeah. part yeah. of the, part of the job is part of it. So yeah. But, hey, mouth charts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I get to draw mouth <laughs> charts for every character from every angle. Uh, Tony asked for, sto uh, for storyboarding, how important <laughs> is it to name your layers? Do I'm it. gonna jump in really quick. Do uh, it. Your, your animatic editor will be very happy. Please if you, I'm, uh, name your <laughs> panels, I'm, if you name your panels. I'm, I'm, a storyboard, I'm a storyboard supervisor right now. So I'm going in and I'm doing revisions and helping out and handing stuff off to revisions. If I see a board a storyboard pro and there's like 15 layers and the character jumps from layer a to layer k to layer b to layer j it, it drives it, it drives me batty 
It drives me insane. It's wasting my time. It's making me angry and making me hate everything about this industry. So it, it's very easy yeah. to label your layers and just start from the get-go. Please just label your layers because also it's, again, yeah. this comes back to professional yeah, empathy. Out of habit. Right. Yeah. It just comes back to professional <laughs> empathy. Just your communication. Stuff, your yeah. stuff is going to be handed off to other people. So mm -hmm. whatever makes their job easier down the line. So you're not having, if a revisionist needs to get stuff done on like a couple of days, consider the fact that they might have to spend a day just completely rejiggering your file and yeah, getting, rid of yeah. getting rid of hidden layers and stuff like that. That's why in Storyboard Pro, I make this very easy. If you set up a Storyboard profile, you could have it so that when you every time you start a new program, a new file, you can have it so certain layers are in there already. So I always have background rough, prop rough, rough character rough, um, same with cleans for each one, and then director's notes and storyboard notes on the top. So then if Ooh. I need to add layers, I can add it, but I make sure to name it because then it makes it easier when you're scrubbing through and you need to fix changes. It, that's, it's having that empathy and knowing that your stuff is going to go into someone else's hands and they're going to have to work with it. Yeah. The, the, mm -hmm. the, and it's, it takes a lot, it takes no work to do it on the front end and it saves a ton of work on the back end. Yeah. So please, yeah. please, when you label your please, stuff, label your <laughs> layers for God's sake. <laughs> Um, from Evan, uh, it, I like this one. How are writers' rooms assembled in TV animation? Are they composed of animators who also write, or is it standalone writers? Um, it, it, it's it's all over the place. And I've worked yeah. on shows where they said, "Hey, uh, here are the writers. Um, they've actually never worked in animation before. They all come from live action, from sitcoms. Um, so this, you know, they'll be, uh, you know." in this with you uh, all the way and uh, learning this kind of as well. So, and you're like, um, and then you yeah. go, great. I'm like, great. All the writers have never worked in cartoons before. Yeah. Um, those have been most of the writers I've worked with have never worked in, they, they come from sitcoms. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I've been, I've been fortunate to be a, a writer and we, you know, fight to get writing credit on board driven shows because a lot of shows still don't give writing credit to board artists. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, a lot of the writers I've worked with are animation writers. They come from animation or they are animators or board artists first, and they're also writers. So that I've worked in both. And I've also worked on shows where I'm dealing with actual, you know, you know, not screen actors, uh, the writers guild, WAG yeah. uh, guild uh, actors. And it's very different. It's a very different, um, it's very different from show to show. So. You can tell if the writers are from live action if the show is very talky, and if it's very not very talky and really cartoony and lots of you know action or slapstick or whatever. They're more of yeah. the they're more animation writers. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I didn't mean to hijack that question, but I was like, I have some things to say about yeah. this. It's all good. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's all good. Nicole asks. I've heard that boards should have at least three planes, wall, wall, floor, for example. Do all shops have to be like that in TV or is it more common for there to be less planes, like one wall, one floor? I mean, more information is better. I think it's just as long as you have a clear layout and it's enough information for the layout artist to go off of that has all the information, as much information that needs to be there. Yeah. Um, that's all that really matters. I mean, it helps to have the planes just to get a, a spatial understanding of where they are but um it's not you know i've i've worked with on shows where, where the background was like practically non-existent or we mm -hmm. and we're just literally drawing the characters in the background just like especially if it's like bugs and elmer in the woods yeah. unless they're interacting with a specific tree or a specific rock or a hole the background really doesn't matter as long as you know that you know they're running this way they're running that way they're going towards mm -hmm. camera they're going away from camera it doesn't really matter but again, more, the more information you have, the better and easier it is for the layout artist that comes after you, so. Good. Cool. Mm -hmm. From Ron, hi, I'm a layout artist working in Canada and I've considered moving my career into being a story artist and trying to break into the US industry. Do you have any tips or recommendations for focusing my study and where to start? Um, yeah, did you, did you have something to say right there? Oh, I thought you looked like you were about ready to say. I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, no, I was like, I was about to say, Michael. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, if you already have a background in layout, that's awesome. Yeah. Because then you have an understanding of composition and setting a stage and stuff like that. Um, watch, watch a lot of movies. Study a lot of movies. Um, 
practice doing placing characters in the background and thinking about how shots are going to progress with characters interacting with another in that space. Um, understand where the camera, you know, can, I mean, as a layout artist, you know where the camera is and where the camera can be to get a point across. If the character's tall, if the character's short, where you angle the camera, you can change the, you know, you know, change, tell story points and so and so forth. But I think just practicing with figuring out uh, story progression using layout first and then working on things like writing and stuff after that, I think would probably be a good exercise to start, mm -hmm. I would say. Cool. Yeah. Uh, kind of a similar next question from Evan. <clears throat> what books or online courses would you recommend for uh, a complete beginner, no experience in drawing? I, I would say um, the Preston Blair book. Um, yep. That's kind of all you need. <laughs> yeah. The Preston Blair book's really, you know, it's classic and it's really kind of covers everything. Yeah. Um, what is the cartoon and animation, I think? Yeah, cartoon animation. Which, By Preston, Preston Blair. Blair. Um, and then there's like The Illusion of Life, The Animator Survival Kit by Richard Williams. Yeah. You know, those are go-tos. I mean, for animation books, that's one thing. But for general, the great thing about general art now is that we live in the age of the internet. Yeah. And you could just go anywhere. You can follow a lot of artists' blogs and most of the time they'll offer, you know, tutorials or they'll show, you know, their, their, um, uh, uh, process from starting something, yeah, figuring it out and finishing it. Yeah, do it. It's also really nice, and I don't use. The, I sadly don't use the site for anything else. But uh, Pinterest is great. Mm -hmm. There's some great yeah, Pinterest. There's, yeah, yeah. There's quite a bit of really cool art on there. Yeah, and a lot of them are categorized. So if you want to look at like, oh, here's like how to draw four-legged animals. Here's mm -hmm. dogs. Here's that, and then you just see a bunch of. You could just look at it and study it, and then you can yeah. see different artists and they usually are labeled like, oh, here's a drawing by Milk Call. Here's the beautiful, you know, layout drawing by so-and-so. Here's some sketches by Hayao Miyazaki and it's all compiled. And a lot of them yeah. are probably ripped from books where you should probably buy the book, <laughs> but at least it's there and it's a resource and it's free and you can just Google search and find it. So yeah, I would recommend yeah. definitely just- I'd say no, just, learn. just think of what artists um, and cartoonists that you like and chances are, hopefully, they might have a website or a blog yeah. and just follow them. And I bet a lot will come from that. Yeah. A lot of my favorite things to do is you look at like sort of like the family tree of an artist and you kind of see like, oh, here's an artist I really like. Who are they inspired by? And you try to read up on them. Like, yeah. Oh, they were inspired by these two artists and three. And then you see how that artist influenced that person, how this one yeah, how incorporates. Cool. Yeah. And then you follow it back to the roots and it always goes yeah. back to like the same like five or six artists from like <laughs> turn of the century or before. Yeah. <laughs> kind of yeah, amazing. Kind of be a detective and uh, yeah. kind of research, you know, who you like and what inspired them, who right. inspired them. Like I would have discovered certain animators or certain um, illustrators or designers if it wasn't for me studying one artist and being, oh, they were inspired by this comic artist who was inspired mm -hmm. by this like newspaper illustrator from the 1920s. Oh shit, that's crazy. <laughs> so it's, that, that's really cool. And then lastly, when I was learning, I would just throw on old Looney Tunes and just pause and freeze frame them that's and just helpful. copy just copy the, the drawings. Once, once I discovered QuickTime Pro, and I could just frame by frame through animation quick times. Yeah. Like that's how I learned to animate. <laughs> yeah. I was able to study and understand things like timing and spacing and stuff yeah. like that, which mm -hmm. is, it's, when you read it in a book, it's hard to understand it when you can't actually physically see it or do it. Sure, sure. So mm -hmm. like, that's why for a beginner, something like Richard Williams' book is like, it's daunting because it's just a lot of technical information. But yeah. if you yeah. actually look at stuff frame by frame, you could study like, oh, you know, the less drawings there are, the faster things move. So if you have too many in-betweens, it moves like this, but if you have too few, it yeah. does that. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's nice to be able to see that in quick time. Yeah. And studying your things by frame by frame. Agreed. There's Toggling. a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do if you're uh, starting at the starting, you know, from the very beginning. Yeah. And the world's your oyster. There's so yeah. much now. There's so much stuff now. Um, are we okay? We have five minutes left. I don't want to make you late, Mike. No, I'm good. But, um, I, I, I'm actually really good. Two, three, so. But we have four questions left. Should we, just should we jump let's, in? Let's, okay. Let's blast through them. Let's do it. Okay. Evan asked, did you both start drawing when you were young? And what were your childhood influences? Uh, yeah. Ooh. Um, 
I think the thing that got me first in an animation was probably The Simpsons. Oh, cool. uh, I was that kid in fourth grade who knew how to draw Bart really well. <laughs> yeah, yes. You know? <laughs> and like, yeah. So, so yeah, Eric could draw Bart. And like, yeah, check that out. <laughs> then like, then I went to, yeah, Disney animation, obviously. Uh, I was like, okay, yeah, I want to do animation. Um, particularly the genie in Aladdin. I'm a yeah. big yeah big air goldberg nut uh i would i would say he's the reason for the season you know yeah. in my sense of uh probably why i'm here so uh and and again you know his influences uh um it was chuck jones and uh, al hirschfeld and mm -hmm. uh all those guys are awesome amazing yeah. um I, I, I also watched a lot of Nicktoons, so mm -hmm. I was lucky to. I was lucky to have a cool parents who would let me watch things that you know my friends didn't get to watch at the time. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I gave Rocco. me appreciation for all sorts of animation. You know. Yeah. It's great. I think Roger Rabbit is what made was the reason I'm Absolutely. here. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Roger Rabbit's also a big one. Yeah, for sure. That we were just we, we were all the perfect age. For that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And also, like, I grew up in, it's growing up in the 90s where there there was so much of it. Like, yeah. there was primetime animation. There was, Disney was coming out with a movie every year. There was whole networks devoted to animation. They were all springing up at the same time. Oh, so, like, the WB I was, shows, yeah. Animaniacs, I was, I was, Tiny Toons. I was born Animaniacs in and Tiny yeah. Toons. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, was, I was born in 89. Yeah. yeah. So, like, everything was already starting to ramp up as I was growing up. So there was yeah. so much, mm -hmm. and I was just constantly surrounded by it. I had every Disney movie on tape, yeah. and VCR was my best friend as a child. So <laughs> yes. I like to me, the big one for me that realized like this is what I want to get into was I saw Fantasia when I was five, and I'm like people, and then I put two and two together like because I used to watch the old Disney show on Disney Channel, and it's like oh someone had to draw all those Mickey's, yeah yeah yeah, and the water that's a job that's cool that's a job and, yeah, and uh, there's a lot of artists that really inspire me terms of animation there's bill little john emory hawkins um or kimball is a big one um a lot of those mm -hmm. old guys i really nowadays i'm looking at a lot more of uh sadly i don't know many of them by name but there's a lot of uh anime people who do anime there's like yo yo shinari his stuff is fantastic i love looking at his stuff i get inspired by it. but as a kid it was mostly reading comic strips like peanuts mm -hmm. and um watching Disney cartoons, specifically the Silly Symphonies, and then, you know, things like Calvin and Hobbes, uh, Bone, Pogo. Bone, was, Bone yeah. and Pogo were really big as a kid, or mm -hmm. as, a, as a teenager. Um, I, I still think you or maybe we should revisit the Silly Symphonies collab. Oh, yeah. The online art I, collab. <laughs> yeah, Silly Symphonies. I love them. I love the Silly Symphonies. Yeah. But like I just I watch them all the time as inspiration in the background, even though they're they're a little bit dated. Like mm -hmm. the storytelling, it's always it's always just I call them uh cycle cartoons where it's like I'm doing a thing, da 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 in case you yeah. missed it. Da 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 and it happens. So <laughs> the cartoons are only, the cartoons are only four <laughs> minutes the cartoons are only four minutes long, but they're actually it's eight minutes because they just double <laughs> everything up twice. Yeah, yeah you're, you're right. They have know. to do the the, the blah, 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 like three yeah. or four times in a row. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Quaint, quaint satisfaction, I call it, because it's like, oh, that's nice. Like looking at an aquarium. Yeah. But it's not like, <laughs> it, doesn't make, it doesn't make me laugh out loud, but it's nice. It kind of, oh, that's nice. Uh, we have three more here. Cool. Tom asks, should I have just one portfolio of storyboard samples or should I have multiple portfolios that are tailored specifically for each um, type of job I apply for, like kid show? Mature audiences, action, comedy, etc. I think that's a good idea. I think you, if yeah. you, if you're going to a, a kid show, if you want to apply to a kid show, have a kid's portfolio. You're not going to show, you know, penises and fart jokes and, and, <laughs> yeah. and hardcore language to try to get a job on like a Dora the Explorer type show. Yeah. And you wouldn't use that vice versa. So I think it's good to have like just like with any sort of design portfolio. I would yeah. say you would you would design based on the the job you're specifically applying to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, would you agree? Yeah. No, I. Agree. I would. I would disagree. No, no I'm just kidding. I would you just, disagree. You just. You just. You just being contrarian <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> um, sorry to 
kind of run through these. No, uh, okay. Uh, I just I feel bad if we ever not get to someone. Yeah, uh, I Mo feel the same way. Maury asks, uh, what were each of your experiences landing your first job in the industry? Um, I don't know if we kind of talked about that at the beginning, but uh, you I said you're oh, Bojack or? Yeah, I got in completely by accident. Yeah. So like I met a guy at Animation Block Party and he was recommended by the guy who ran Animation Block Party. He's, the guy who ran Bojack is a guy named Mike Hollingsworth. Mm -hmm. And we met at Animation Block Party in New York. There's an animation festival that takes place in Brooklyn every year. And I was introduced to him and we did a thing where you get on stage with comedians and there's a screen behind them and you draw behind them. They gotcha. just asked me yeah. if I wanted to do it. I said, yeah, I'll try anything once. So Mike was the stand up and I was drawing behind him. And we had a good rapport and we friended each other on Facebook, which was nice. This was in like 2010. And then 2011, the end of 2011, Oh, no, no, this was in, this was in like 2011, 2012. And mm -hmm. then I moved out at the end of 2012 to LA. And the moment I put my bags down, I got an email from Mike saying, Hey, I'm doing a pilot about a depressed horse. <laughs> I think you'd be perfect for it. Do you want a storyboard on it? And I've never boarded in my life, but I needed a job. And he did, he just assumed I was a board artist. So I'm like, I'm going to fake it till I make it. Oh, there you go. I got yeah. in. I got in and I, I faked it and they liked it. And then I realized, oh, I actually like boarding because there was no jobs for animation when I was coming out because you know Disney was dying and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, boarding is like animating, but I don't have to in between anything. This is kind of mm -hmm. nice. And I get to come up with stories and like plan to do a lot more work than just drawing it. That's kind of cool. So I fell into boarding by accident based on someone assuming I was already a board artist. Wow. <laughs> so that's my story. Uh, mine is, I decided, I mean, like, I decided in school and like, I think character design is kind of where I'd want to go. And I've, I, you know, I've always kind of had that. Um, and then when I left for a while and didn't draw at all, it was like exploring the world. And then I kind of, once I came back to it, like I, like I, again, you can use all that new stuff as, 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 uh, like creative fodder, you know, um, but I was working, I was working illustrating advertising when I got an email from Warner Brothers. Um, I had, you know, been drawing and putting stuff online. Uh, and uh, I guess Jessica Barutsky somehow found my work. So cool. yeah, it's important to, uh, people are looking at, yeah, at yeah. online guys. Put everything the, the online. Studios, studios look at that stuff. They do. Yeah um so that's that's how she found me uh on i think it was tumblr so <laughs> yeah it, it was uh, what year was that what 2013 yeah 2012? 2013. i was gonna say i wonder if my because I, I wonder if my art shows were happening because you were in my art shows since the beginning and yeah. um i wonder if maybe like we all conversed during one of the yeah. shows or something yeah you never know that too yeah just participating and stuff like that you know yeah, you never know someone recommends you and then they pass your name along things like that yeah so. um cool <laughs> yeah that was actually the last question the oh. next one was a read post of a past okay. question so that was the last one um right. so yeah thank you guys so much <laughs> sorry we had to kind of rush it at the end there no it's all it's all good to everyone um, yeah exactly and thanks for everyone for watching too. This was yeah, a, thank you guys. another good thank one. You. Thanks. Another so good one much. in the bag. <laughs> um, and usually, um, sorry, we do these every two weeks. The next one will be in three weeks. It'll be on December 30th, um, just because of, of Christmas being the week, the in two weeks. So um, the next one's December 30th. And we'll be, and uh, actually, people were really into this last time when we talked about editing for almost half a stream. But so I was like, oh, let's, you know, let's do editing. And uh, so that's kind of my department. And uh, I'll get um, my friends, Rachel, Matt Braley, and uh, Jay, uh, they'll be, uh, other editors, they'll, they'll be uh, joining me for that. And on the 30th. So we'll see you guys then. And uh, any, anything you guys want to Anything before we leave you want to plug or um, your Twitters or your uh, 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 Tumblrs or whatever? <laughs> Erica Tuesday, and it's spelled A-R-I-C-A. -A. I'm sure you, that's usually where, you know, oh, you switch those two together. And I'm on Twitter that way. I'm on the Tumblr that way. I'm on uh, 
cool. whatever else that way. Yeah. CTN just posted your uh, your stuff. Oh yes, yeah, so on Instagram <laughs> yeah. that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it sucks I'm, because like it, I have not been all that great at posting just because like yeah work itself has been so nuts and and it sucks to have like everything like nda sure <laughs> sure right. i can't post everything i have, I have yeah. a little i have a little pin in my car that says all my it's work good. is under nda and it's right above <laughs> all my it. best work is under <laughs> yeah. nda um uh, but yeah, I, I know. Uh, yeah thank you I, thank you guys yeah twitter twitter is a time suck for me so i'm on there more than I probably should. Yeah, he is. Guy a, guy, who a guy who draws. Yeah. A guy who guy draws. Who that's draws. me. And I'm on there and I post a lot. I try to post and repost other people's stuff um, to share yeah. it because I like seeing new artists and stuff like that. You yeah. post educational stuff too. Yeah, yes. I try to everyone. I learn stuff. I learn yeah. stuff about cartoons. And then um, I'm doing a film called Sniff and Snoof. Uh, you could follow me on, I have a Patreon to help support yes, making the film. So it's, uh, <laughs> it should be Michael J. Rocco. Uh, Patreon slash Michael J. Rocco. I think that's that's it. I hope so. You'll find me. <laughs> um, but I'm doing a film called Sniff and Snoof, and I do streams. I try to stream once a week and on Twitch. Awesome. So if you want to watch me animate and bullshit and possibly sing show tunes, um, you can watch me on Twitch. And <laughs> again, um, super informative. Cool. Super informative. Learn a lot. Like sure. like like how you know you were talking about yeah. earlier about like you know going through quick time files or whatever yeah like and, just watching this animate is like right. mm. and i'll say really quickly before we go we me and erica met on wabbit and um she's been so inspirational to me and so like i feel like there's a weird cross pollination where we're like her design work and her art has inspired me and i hope that my animation has helped it has there so it has. it's that's a yeah, good thing about no, working in this man. industry is that you meet people sweet and high five like, man high five <laughs> don't leave me hanging I got. Yeah. I, I remember you both recommending each other for my sh art shows. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I happen to know you both, but you, like you didn't think that I knew the other one at the time. Yeah. Cool. Oh well, you know, I'll just eight years ago, sure. seven years yeah. ago, eight years ago. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, well. Thank you guys so much again for taking your time to be here. No problem. And that was super informative as always. The best one. <laughs> um, okay, we'll see you guys on the thirtieth for everyone who's going to join us for the next ones. Um, thanks guys have a great night you take too. care Take it easy bye thanks guys. everybody bye, -bye.